Best of luck to you if you're seeking good information online, especially if all you have time or patience for is headlines. I'll keep this quick. That's how we like to do things around here anyway. Let's begin with what has the money and media behind it. Antarctica is melting faster than ever, faster and faster, and will soon disappear. This is what you see if you just read the headlines. What you will find somewhere in those articles, however, is things like what NASA puts out. In 2013, Antarctica had more ice than humans had ever seen. That's the red line. The 2014 ice shown there broke that record, and in 2015 we're seeing that yet again. So which is it? Record high ice or runaway melting, or both? This is the official data from the NSIDC, supported by NASA and others. Dotted green is last year's record highs. Blue is this year. It hasn't been a constant streak of new high ice records every single day, but still, the fact is that Antarctic sea ice is at an all-time high. This is what you find if you simply seek out the data. If you want to know what the experts think, however, you will certainly find information saying that the sea ice is thinning out and spreading. In fact, most mathematical models agree that a good reason for the record high ice is that it is simply melting out and refreezing in thin, large layers. Our arrogance as people is outmatched only by our errors. When they sent a robot to boldly confirm that the ice was thinning, they found exactly the opposite. This wasn't quite as bad as the British science voyage that went down there to prove global warming and then got stuck in the ice, along with everyone who came to their immediate rescue, but it's close to being that bad of a misjudgment. Fact is, the Antarctic ice is much, much thicker than those experts predicted. Yet still, other experts think that the ice is melting off the actual land, and that the increase is in sea ice only. This, again, is what all the math says. We have yet to find out if it is correct or not. But I submit to you that nearly everyone who digs this deep down the rabbit hole is thinking about the wrong thing. Whether this is a review or a cliff's note for you is irrelevant, but consider this. One of the two best explanations for the global warming pause over the last two decades is directly related to how much ice we can find at the poles, and indeed the rest of the planet as well. Albedo has to do with Earth's energy balance, and we're finding that this is one of the primary drivers of global temperatures in times of climate change and in those of more stability. Some areas of the planet absorb a lot of energy. Some reflect almost all of it, but most of the planet sees a dramatic change in albedo based on the seasons, whether there's snow on the ground or not. Clouds play a role as well. If you've heard of nuclear winter or how a volcano can cool the planet with its aerosols, then you are already quite familiar with the power of losing energy that was meant to be absorbed at Earth's surface. On this chart, you can see how albedo ranges from 0 to 1, with 1 being perfect reflection. Sea ice and snow near rich wooded forests are the two greatest albedo factors because oceans and trees absorb the most, while the ice and snow is the best reflector. It's the largest shift from one side to another. This entire point is counterintuitive to what you think growing up. The sun beats down, melts the ice and snow, and that's about all there is to it. But in reality, this snow and ice can have runaway effects of cooling from albedo. So while people squabble about where this ice is coming from and why there is so freaking much of it, I just keep seeing absorption zone after absorption zone become a beacon of reflection and lost energy, lost heat, and one step closer to that runaway cooling. Whether there is a meter or an inch of fresh powder, the sunlight just doesn't care. It's leaving. So where's the line of no return where it could become runaway cooling? Don't know. Even if the land ice is confirmed to be thinning, it's certainly not going to stop snowing there anytime soon. Not even the boldest global warming advocate would make such a claim. Fact is, the albedo discussion has far more merit in the climate change realm than any other regarding this record high Antarctic sea ice. So right about now you have to be asking why the only thing most people hear about is that Antarctica is melting faster than ever. Well, there absolutely is one part that is melting, the western sheet. And again, when they actually went below the ice to investigate, they found the truth. A massive underwater volcano and other geothermal sources were responsible for the melt in that area. Fact is, 
the only part of the Antarctic ice that is in trouble, has an enormous volcano beneath it, and it's still not changing the surface albedo. So the facts. Antarctic ice covers more area now than ever before, and the trend has been increasing. The ice on the water is only thinning in the minds of the computer modelers. The actual observations show thicker ice. The ice on land may be thinning a bit, but compared to the albedo increase of turning ocean to white reflection, what are we really arguing about here? The western sheet absolutely is losing ice at an insane rate, but that's got nothing to do with global warming, just a massive underwater volcano. I have included below links for you to learn more about albedo, just in case you are sick of getting your information from someone trying to get clicks with an eye-catching headline. This video might put you on your bottom a bit, but does it mean you get to pollute and waste and not care about climate change? Oh my no. Keeping our planet clean is vital. It's just that a full understanding of how nature plays a role in climate change has been vastly underappreciated. For more hilarious or perhaps sickening climate change facts, please see Top 6 Climate Change Problems. A link to this is also found for you below. Now, let's get to the news. Good morning, folks. Well, we avoided a space weather bonanza for now. The massive filament stayed put and began turning away. The solar flaring remains pitifully low despite the conjunction of Mercury and the Sun, and the sunspots aren't helping. They remain small, spread, and lacking complexity. The one down south has potential if its largest umbra gets some close company. Solar wind speed, still on a slight rise there in yellow. Despite that and a sector boundary a couple days ago, Earth's magnetic shield is a champion right now. Cock of the walk up there. We're in between quake upticks as well as the coronal fields are stingy with the openings right now. Solar wind and near-Earth influence should be from the positive opening. And with all Earth's magnetic connections to that same opening, we'll need some negative before an uptick begins again. Folks, you have just two days left to pre-register for observing the frontier. Dr. Robotai, Dr. Uyen, myself, and a number of others plan to make it very worth your while. Also, folks, today is Saturday, so we've got a Fly on the Wall podcast episode coming up in just a few hours. The membership to view those and the rest of the hundreds of hours of content is just $3 a month or 20 for an entire year. That is going up June 1st with the Earth Changes Partnership, but signing up before then locks in the lower price for as long as the website exists. Take advantage. That is the first East Pacific hurricane of the season. Remember, we expect it to be bad over here this year, and that could mean mega floods for the Southwest once again this year, but not from this one. In the United States, I'll start with the cloud layer to show the flow out of the Pacific. That's one of two cloud lines here. The other brings the severe alerts again tonight, as it is the primary convergence in the United States right now. I'm going back to the cloud layer for Europe because it makes things much easier to see with how those lows are connected on their southwest sides. Two curling swirls, one feeds into the other. Down under, the lows and convergences south and to the east are easy to see, but you have to try a bit more to see where the southern and northern flows meet across the mainland of Australia. But once you see it, the rest is history. Remember, folks, two days left to lock in membership price and get your discounted tickets for observing the frontier. Support emails. Don't panic. We're still behind, but if you sent one, we'll get you taken care of. I've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.